Tak. Okay, think everything is prepared now. <clears throat> Let me go check what's going on on Facebook. Is it working? Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. LinkedIn is saying join in, join in. I'm still learning how to do all this multi-streaming on all these different platforms. <clears throat> View on Facebook. Okay, is it going on Facebook? Yeah. Looks like I'm on lessons for stutterers. Oh, I forgot my lipstick. <laughs> okay, it's not really important. So I'm gonna close it here. Okay, wave. Hello, everyone. Good to see you guys here, Amir. Good to see you. I'm trying to contact you, but I couldn't. I don't know why can't you contact me. I am available everywhere, but you know what? The world is so crazy today. <laughs> they block me everywhere. They're, and not just me, Americans. Anyway, they want to separate people from different countries, and that's what they do. Okay, Amir, I will DM on your Instagram. Please do reply when you're free. Of course I will. Hi, Dinesh. Hi. Okay. But, you know, Amir, I recommend you go and join me on YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Because this is the place where you can see my lessons. Every time I go live, I teach a lesson. And today is a very, very important lesson for people who stutter. Hi, Philip. Thank you for joining. Once again, I'm going to remind you, before I have more people joining me, so I want to remind you that the Google app called Live Starter Free is available for each of you, you can download it on your phone and begin your speech education. Begin freeing yourself from stuttering. Begin learning. Okay, let me see what's going on over here. I'm not comfortable. Let me get closer here. Okay. So, yeah, Dinesh. Hello, madam. Hi, Dinesh. So... I would like to encourage you to write your questions. If you guys want, want to know something about how you're supposed to, you can get rid of stuttering in almost no time, you got to ask questions. Because here is Anna Dieter doing multi-streaming, doing my best to go live once a week at least when I don't have a student scheduled. Then I can go and help you answer your questions. But I hope you understand that our time is the only valuable possession we have in our life. Our time is our life. So when I am giving you my time, and if you do not give me anything in return, like, for example, a little bit of money, right? At least a little bit, then it's never going to work. It has to be a very equal exchange. I give you information, you give me the funds. I give you my time, you give me the funds. This is very fair system of exchange with energies. 
I call it energy exchange system. But if you are just sitting here and expecting something for free, I just know it's never going to work. <laughs> okay. So, but let's go to the point I want to make the first thing before we go to the first lesson, because I am beginning the system of free lessons, free. Although I do realize that nothing is free in this world, but I am going this path because I know that this is what all people who start have in their mind. They believe that they can get the information that they can benefit from for nothing. They can get it for free. I'm here to give you this information. But whether you're going to be able to understand this information, I don't know. Whether you're going to be able to apply this information correctly, again, I don't know. And I don't guarantee this. Hi, Elias. Good to see you here again. Yeah, I like seeing the same names. So if you were on YouTube, on Facebook or LinkedIn, you would have been able to see the title of today's class. It's called Lessons for Stutterers. Lessons for people who stutter, stammer, clutter, or have any other speech imperfections. This is my lesson today, and I'm, I'm going to begin teaching it in just a few minutes. But once again, if you would like to learn, to begin learning these lessons on your own, feel free to download your Google app called Live Stutter Free Google app. Unfortunately, I cannot show it to you because it's on my phone <laughs> and I'm using my phone for Instagram. Okay. So let's begin. And one more little reminder. If you would like to see clearly what I'm showing on the screen, because I will be showing on the screen pretty soon various things, I encourage you to go to Live Starter Free Google app, download it on your cell phone, on your device, and begin learning. Some of the information is freely available on this Google app. Some of it has a little monthly charge, monthly charge. So you can download it on your phone. You can begin education for a small amount of money. And if you don't like it, you can always delete it. You can always stop charging your credit card or whatever you're using to pay for the Google app sometimes. But a lot of information is free. It's free. You don't have to pay anything. So let's begin. The topic of today's lesson is lessons for stutterers. And I am going to talk about, I'm going to begin sharing the screen right now. And if you are on Instagram, you can go to my wall and you can see this image that I downloaded not a long time ago. The, I'm going to do it this way. All right. Okay, let me go there and see if I can make it. Oh, hide, turn, go to post, share to copy link. Mm -hmm. Go to post. Oh, now it's bigger. Perfect. Okay. So here we go. So now you can see on your screen this image that I'm talking about. For people who are still watching me on Instagram, I'm going to switch the screen right now. So you guys could see, I could see it. Okay, let me go <clears throat> here now. Yeah. People on Instagram, let me know if you can see it well. So this is the image I have posted just a few days ago 
on the image, you see the man walking with a balance beam, walking on the rope over a city. So obviously this walk, rope walker is on a very, very high, um, I mean, far distance from the land. He is only, he's very high above the land. And he is walking and holding a balancer, the beam balance in his, uh-oh, wave to people, wave to people. Okay, I don't understand. Okay, okay. Everything is fine. Hi, Maria Kudryavtseva. Mashka, привет. <laughs> okay. So people, a person is walking and holding the balance beam. I call it a balancer. And in order for this person to walk well, he has to has the skill of balancing his walking on this thin rope, this thin wire. So he wouldn't fall off this wire and, of course, kill himself. Okay? So remember this little image I've created. I'm going to go back to me now. Okay, here I am, and I'm going to go to the main studio. I am using StreamYard Studio to do these presentations. So why I am showing you this picture to people who stutter? Why? I want you people who stutter to understand that speech Speaking is a balancing action. It's an action of balancing different points of balance when we use our perfect body-mind computer. And I have already explained not once that whenever we are born, we get a totally normal, totally perfect, most of the time, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, we have high harsh. I see your high. We have a perfect body mind biocomputer. It's just brand new, right from the store. And we begin learning to balance this body mind computer, biocomputer, I call it for simplicity, for doing anything we want. At first, a young baby begins to balance. It's body-mind computer for chewing food, for sucking on the nipple, then for chewing food, right? For even balancing the movements of the tongue, moving the tongue, for moving the food in the mouth, for swallowing food. This is also the action of balancing what, whatever we have, right? So the baby begins to balance different parts of the body-mind computer. And exactly the same is speaking. In order to speak, we have to balance different points of balance, different things. And the reason I am showing you this rope walker, because when we look at people like this and see how easily they are walking, we think, oh, this person is talented. He's so talented. He can walk on the rope and he's not falling down. He's amazing. He's such a talented man. But when you look at him, we think, oh, it looks so simple. <laughs> Do you truly think, harsh, that walking on the rope or on a very thin wire is very easy. For this man, maybe it is easy. But for me, and probably for you, it's not, right? It's not easy. Why? Because balancing the body while walking on the thin wire requires a lot of training. A lot of balancing, training to balance your body while you are walking on this rope. Are you understanding me, Harsh? Because 
you're the only one who has said hi. The others haven't <laughs> said hi. They're just watching me and not saying hi. Okay. So why this gentleman walking with the rope, I mean, on the rope, why is he holding a really bulky, really long balance beam? What is it for? It's very simple. This long and bulky balance beam is the tool that enables this person to always get back to the center of his balance. Center of the balance. We're going to talk about it in a second. Center of the balance. So when a person is balancing, Walker is balancing this beam, it helps him. Whenever he is uh, a little bit out of balance, the beam reminds him which way he should put his body. He should move his body right or left. Okay, it helps him. So the balance beam is a tool for a rope walker to balance his body and not to fall off, right, the rope. Believe it or not, when people walk with their tongue, when they speak, when they produce words with accuracy, with ease, in order for them to keep the balance of their body, mind, computer, they also need a balance beam. And what is this beam? It's called the natural speech standard. Hi, Jerry. Hi, thank you for joining me. The natural speech standard. This is the beam that we can balance our speech with. Balance beam, I call it a speech balance. How do you do it? Do you see this marker? Hope I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drop it. Okay, look how much time it takes for me to find the balance. I okay, let me do it in, on the other finger. Okay, something like this. No, it's still, I'm helping with the other finger. Takes time. Finally, I am able, I was able to find the balance. Do you see that? Now I am balancing. I'm balancing the marker and my finger I have the sense of equilibrium now. Everything is balanced. But if I move to the left or to the right, my finger to the left or to the right of this marker, guess what's going to happen? Look, I'm going to move it this way. It's going to drop. <laughs> it's going to fall. This is what I call the balance. It's a center of balance. Here is, this is the point where my pen, my marker is not going to fall. This is what I am calling the balance beam for speaking. Hi, Edward. Hello, queen. <laughs> I like how you're calling me the queen. If you call me the queen, you better call me the queen of speech balance. That's a good one, right? The queen of speech balance. This is what I, as a young girl, I have developed. What, how to do, what to do with my body, body, mind, computer, so I could balance my speech, balance it. So I wouldn't stumble, I wouldn't block, I wouldn't do all kinds of crazy things that people who started do. Okay, so you got to understand that even now I am a speech master. My speech is almost perfect, almost, not completely. I do make mistakes sometimes when I lose my balance. I do sometimes also lose my balance. Okay, I do it sometimes, but it's not a problem with me 
because my speech balance is always with me. I know exactly where the point is. See, right now I'm again looking for the point. Uh -uh. Okay, I found the point. <laughs> Do you understand me? Edward wrote, please, can you show yourself wider on the screen? We are able to see only a title square. Oh, I get it. Okay, I can do it bigger like this. Because I'm talking about, is it better? Right. Okay. Thank you, Edward. So once again, here is the balancer. Here is my balancer, balance beam. Here is the only point where my, where my marker is sitting on my finger. But if I move the marker le right or left, it inevitably will fall off my finger. I will lose the balance. So once again, the reason I'm talking about the balance, because this is the new and again, a very easy way how Mr. Snishko, my mentor, is presenting our program. Of course, it's still the same. It's still the same. But let me see if I can do it this way. Oh, no, now I don't see. I don't know how I can get rid of everything else but the image. I guess I can, I can do it. Mm. Let me see if I have this image of my, on my screen. Yes, I have this image on the screen. Let me try it. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. You know what? Let me do it. Let me get rid of this. Bear with me, guys, because I'm still learning, learning, learning. It's never, never done. Okay, remove. I have removed this, but I will present video file. Video file. It's not a video file. It's an image, still image. Mm. Let me see if I can show you the still image desktop. Nah, it doesn't allow me because it's not a video file. Cancel. Cancel. Sorry. I thought I could, I would be able, but you've seen it, right? You understand the balancer who is balancing, walking on the rope and balancing with a balance beam. You understand it. Let me add it again. Add to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where were we? Yeah. I was talking, and by the way, there are several people watching me, but not asking any questions. And the best way I can teach my lessons when people ask questions because as i just explained to edward i am a queen of the speech balance balance i can balance my speaking everywhere anytime and even if i lose my balance for a split of a second even if i begin to stumble it's not a problem for me because I have my balance beam. And the balance beam is the set of natural speech standards, norms, standards that never change. The beam is still the same. It never changes, never changes. It's very important to understand. But what are these things that we have in our balance. There are different things we need to balance when we speak. They are different. Number one, I'm going to talk about it because it's a lesson. Lesson number one, you got to learn to balance several things at once. The first thing is, of course, you got to make sure you are able to balance the main muscle in your body that produces speech, produces words, the tongue. So when my tongue has been trained to say any word at any time in balance, not according to the syllables, not according to the letters we write, 
not according to whatever they single sounds they teach in schools and speech therapists teach, but according to the natural speech standards of the tongue work. The tongue works according to the so-called ringtones. We have talked about it in our previous classes. So this is number one. If you have trained your tongue to produce every single word in balance with no problem according to the ringtones, then this is not a problem for you. Your tongue already has been trained. Then you can balance your speech. However, there are I just wrote down on my board here so I wouldn't forget. There are five more points of balance that you have to keep in mind. I mean, not to keep in mind, but you have to balance as well. They all in this one never changing balance beam. So one ingredient of this balance beam is our tongue, the muscle that produces words. This is number one. Okay, Edward wrote, how can we introduce this balance in our day-by-day -day speaking? Perfect question. And this is what I am talking about. You got to be able to train each of these points to balance each of these points. See, when a person is walking on the rope and balancing, okay, let's forget for a second about that person. Let's focus on me. Balancing my, balancing this little marker. Okay, here is a marker. I'm balancing it. As I am balancing it, I have to balance so many things at once. I have to balance the marker to find the center of this marker where the marker is not going to fall off my finger. I have to balance my finger. I have to balance my eyes. I have to balance feeling of my fingers, of my finger feeling this thing. I have to balance the memory that I've had balancing this marker. Do you understand? Do you see how many things I have to balance? Now I took my eyes away from this marker and I am just totally balancing this marker with feeling it. It's so much harder to compare with whenever I'm looking at it. Do you see how many different things we have to balance at once? And this is what I'm going to talk about today. So, as I said, balance number one, you have to balance your tongue. Of course, the tongue must have been trained before. Prior to balancing, the tongue must have, have, must have, have, yeah, must have, have this, <laughs> must have this training from before. So you got to know how to move your tongue, period. This is the most important balance, the tongue balance. Also, what's also included in this balance? It's our eyes. And unfortunately, whenever I see people who start, I would say 99% of them do this all the time. When they speak, they roll their eyes. They try to find the word to know what to say. They're trying. They are desperately trying to select what to say. They're thinking of what to say by moving their eyes. This is why they cannot balance their speech. Let me give you a simple example. Imagine this rope, rope walker. At the moment when he is walking on the rope and balancing his body on the thin wire, What's going to happen if all of a sudden he's going to begin do, doing what you guys are doing? Looking at the audience, <laughs> looking at the buildings below, looking at the 
clouds above, feeling the wind. What's going to happen to him? 100% he's going to fall down. He's going to fall down. The only thing that enables this wire walker, let me get him. Oh, yeah, he's there. Wire or rope walker, stay on the rope. The only thing that enables him to do that, that he is 100% focused on his senses. Senses, sense of his legs, sense of his eyes, sensing his, the, sensing his, the rope with his legs, sensing the rope with his uh, legs, sensing, 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 feeling it. Do you understand me, Edward? I see three people now. Do you guys understand me? So in order for a person to speak, he needs to sense the tongue. He needs to sense his eyes if he needs sensing his eyes. He just needs to understand how to use the eyes. This is also inside of this balance beam for speech. Okay. Another point, and by the way, if you don't have, if you have this problem, if you're one of those who doesn't know how to use your sense, vision sense, your eyes correctly, you got to come to me and I'm going to simply teach you this. This is how you are supposed to teach this balancing tool, one of the points, your eyes. Aisha, can you check your DM, please? Oh, 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 Aisha, you probably meant Anna, <laughs> but I got it, Amir. Okay. Okay, I will, but not now, because right now I'm in the middle of the class. Okay, Amir. And also, Amir, I truly recommend you switch from here, go to YouTube. Amir, there you can see what I am talking about much better. Okay, so let's continue. Edward wrote, yes, queen of speech balance. Yay, that's what I am. I'm the queen of the speech balance. I got to give this idea to, nah, I wanted to show you the picture. <laughs> I have one picture their tongue wearing a crown because right now I am in the middle of, again, finishing up, working, writing, going through my main book that I have been working on since 2017. I just couldn't finish it. It was too much for me. I was too busy working with students and I quit working for on it for some time. It's called The Starter's Bible. The Starter's Bible. I quit working on it. Okay, okay. But now I am in the middle of the work. Yesterday, I even asked my husband to write a preface for the book. He wrote a very interesting piece. I may be starting sharing these pieces from the book. If you are in reading books. Okay. So Edward understood me. Thank you for your feedback. I don't see any questions, so let's continue. Again, one point, one ingredient of this beam, balancing beam, the tongue. The other one, the eyes. The third one is our ear, ears, because people speak in the way they hear, period. And if I didn't have my computer here standing, <laughs> you would have seen the picture of a parrot behind me. On the wall, I have a picture of a parrot. This is how all people learn to speak. They listen and they balance. They imitate, they balance, move their tongue, balancing it, adjust, moving their tongue to repeat the same word with the same movements of the tongue in the exactly same way as it sounds coming from the mouths of other people. This is called 
the ear part of the thank you for the like at least someone liked me <laughs> i'm always like i've talked to so many people where are your likes guys right okay so let's continue don't forget don't be stingy give me likes this is the only thing i ask you it's free right you don't have to pay so one ingredient again the eyes the ear we gotta know how the word sounds so we could imitate the word with our tongue so we can balance balance keep the balance and when we are speaking this is also one part of speaking i'm teaching my students learn to listen to the music you are creating with your tongue People who start a goal like this, they never even know what they are doing. Their attention goes like crazy. But this is another, another point of balance that I'm going to talk about today. We probably will begin talking about this balancing points next time. Okay? Like one by one maybe. I don't know. But... The thing is, even if you keep your attention, if you balance only one thing, once again, a person walking on the rope, look at this guy. Even if he pays attention only to his legs, he's going to fall off the rope because he's going to not take in consideration so many other things. If I could, I'd give you infinite likes. <laughs> Why am I feeling to touch my ears when I feel a block is coming? Exactly. You're even feeling your subconsciousness is telling you, hey, Edward, you got to first listen. Make sure you know what you want to say. You got to listen. What you got to what you just said and you are touching your ears for very simple reason because you're not using correctly your hearing tool normal people never listen to themselves using their external ears never there is internal connection internal connection sensory connection between the tongue and the hearing internal hearing it's never outside outside ears see i may making a funny funny face with big ears <laughs> so you could understand it people do use their ears to hear external noises external what other people say what noises the wind is making when the leaves are moving on the tree what noises the car is making when it's beep 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 honking on the street when your neighbors walk by your windows and talking i am using my ears external ears external ears for external hearing and you are even touching your ears <laughs> That's exactly, thank you so much, Edward, for bringing it to me. Because your body tells you you're not doing it right. Nothing will come in your external ears if you are speaking. You are supposed to listen to yourself, not to others. Okay? Sorry, I didn't complete reading. Why am I feel? Sorry, guys, I keep forgetting I'm going to share with you show yeah okay edward i'm gonna read again if i could i'd give you infinite likes <laughs> why am i feeling to touch my ears when i feel a block is coming and it's functioning i can pass the block easier pass the block easier this is what you believe. You know, at the moment, you believe, you switch your attention. This is one of the points, again, that I haven't mentioned yet. While doing this, you physically switch your attention from 
feeling the block is coming because yeah of course you know your subconscious is telling you hey guy you don't know how to do this you are going to block right now you're not gonna do it right it's coming you're feeling the block coming but when you are touching your ears you're switching your attention to listening yes you do but unfortunately you attempt to listening to your external ears you don't know how to use your internal ear internal hearing that is connected to our mind this is another part so depending on what part you are not including when you are balancing your speech you need to include this part of points of balance to balance you need to include this or vice versa you need to get rid of attempting to balance for example in your case edward you need to stop touching your ear normal people don't do this normal people focus on balancing everything at once they know intuitively what to balance you don't have this intuition people who started don't have intuition this is why they do this some of them move their eyebrows i've seen people they go like like this i have worked with this kind of people they believe they need to balance their tongue like this they do this i mean all kinds of weird things <laughs> okay so the bottom line in order to balance your speech you have to have a balancing beam in place balance beam a balance beam that has at least six points that i am mentioning today are you ready to move to the next point let's go let me hide oops hide your comment <clears throat> okay <clears throat> so let me again list point number one your ear you need to hear of course what word you want to say you need to hear external ear okay your ear you need to balance your eyes to move them correctly or don't move not to move at all depends okay you need to balance your tongue this balancing has to be done prior to you even begin speaking okay next part of your body mind computer it's called the lungs the container of air it's also part of the balance part of the balance and this is why so many confused people are teaching people who started to breathe to do breathing exercises this is absolutely insane <laughs> because when we speak we never breathe we never breathe when we speak i hope you understand this if you've been listening to me for quite some time breathing is not a part of speaking and when people who started begin balancing their breathing they cannot speak because it's not again part of speaking the lungs our lungs is the air pump air pump just like our heart it works the heart pumps the blood the lungs pump the air it happens automatically without our participation and when people begin practicing breathing they cannot speak because what is breathing breathing doesn't make any noise see i'm breathing right now am i making any noises now this is how when you are trained when they train you to breathe this is what you are supposed to do <gasps> Ah, ah, ah. 
this is kind of speaking already. <laughs> but do people speak like this? This is absolutely insane again. Do you understand me, Edward? Then throw in the trash bin all the breathing exercises. Oh, God. I did one time and I'm already <laughs> dizzy, feeling dizzy. <clears throat> Whenever people do breathing practice, they develop horrible diseases of their lungs, of their bronchi, bronchs, of their hearts. People develop all kinds of sicknesses of the body only because they've been trained to do breathing exercises. It's just crazy. But let's move from lungs to another extremely important balancing beam, part of the beam, part of balance beam. It's called our memory. Memory. The synonym for the word memory is the, the mind. Because we are balancing body-mind device, body-mind computer. And if you don't know how to use your memory, how to retrieve words from your memory, if your memory is not connected to your tongue, to your ears, to your eyes, then you're going to be in trouble. And what is the tool for connecting your memory to all of these other parts of the balancing beam? What are they? It's called attention. Attention. So the only way you can balance everything that I mentioned before, you got to learn what is attention, how it works when we speak, how to balance your speech. You need to know how to use your attention. <clears throat> okay. Hi. <laughs> you just joined. Sorry, I don't know how your name sounds. This is why my tongue uh, doesn't have the training of moving. I haven't balanced my tongue to say your name. This is why I'm totally stopped stuttering, stumbling. I'm out of balance when I'm reading this word. I don't know how to read your name. This is why I am out of balance. Do you understand this? Okay. So these six points that I just listed, ear, eyes, tongue, lungs, memory or mind, attention, they all have to be in balance. You have to be able to balance between them all so you would be able to produce any word, anywhere, in front of anyone with 100% accuracy, ease, and, of course, confidence. It doesn't matter who is in front of you. You have to have the balance in place. And as I mentioned many times, the hardest part is to balance, to keep the balance and to keep your attention in the right place when we are getting a lot of distractions, which for people who stutter, the distractions are people Oops. that are in front of them, right? So whenever people who start to see others, see the boss at work, see the important people, they give their one indivisible beam of attention to these objects or subjects or these things. They don't know how to use their attention. They don't know it. And this is why they get out of balance. They lose their balance. I don't know if you guys are understanding me. I don't see any feedback. 
And this is something new, the way I'm presenting the program today, because it's so easy to understand. You got to train, you got to train yourself to keep the balance between all of these things at once. How do you do it? By understanding what are the natural steps of speaking and doing it anywhere, anytime, in front of anyone, in exactly the same way. It doesn't matter where this gentleman walks. It doesn't matter what kind of people are looking at him. I'm talking about the rope walker. Does he care about people who are watching him? The cameras are rolling, filming him. At nighttime, there could be many people attempting to take pictures of him walking there, up there. Do you understand me? But does he care about them? Where is his attention? His attention is balancing, balancing. His attention is on the set of tools or the tool, <clears throat> the set of <clears throat> balances <clears throat> for his body, set of balances, the balance beam, that's where his attention is. Because whenever he is walking <clears throat> and feeling that he's out of balance, he can immediately move the balance beam here or there, use his balance beam, and he's back to be balancing. Do you understand that? Okay. Salom wrote, wow, powerful presentation. My network, oh, you are on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Salom Nikasote, wow. Oh, I'm going to push the button, show. I'm going to show your comment. Powerful presentation. My network is really bad, but I am enjoying the lesson. Of course. Thank you so much for this comment. It's very simple. The reason it is powerful because it's simple to understand. Even to the most confused person, it's really easy to understand. And again, I'm going to mention to Salem, Nakasote. Don't know. Again, my tongue is not trained. I don't have the balance in the tongue to read your name correctly. So once again, in order to have a perfect speech, you got to have the balance, the balance. And the balance is called the natural speech standard, a set of natural speech standards. Even if I kind of make a mistake, make a slip of a tongue, I go too quickly, I get out of balance, I break my balance, I can move my balance beam. I can just go back immediately to my balance and I'm not going to fall in speaking. It's not a problem for me to make a mistake because I have this balance beam. Understand? I hope you do. Okay. Thank you so much for Salem. Again, I'm going to hide your message and I am going to go. Oh, another. Wait a second. It's the same one. I made a mistake. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Edward. Edward wrote, thank you for all the information you give us, ma'am. Absolutely. Just make sure that you understand this information and you use it in your life. But if you are still confused, you don't have the balance. Hi, I am here. You can always come to me and I'm going to give you this balance. But the problem is you need to see where is you out of balance. In which point that I mentioned you are out of balance. Which one? You're moving your eyes like crazy all the time. This is your out of balance point. If you are not listening and keep grabbing your ears, this is your out of balance point that you need to address. I don't know where it is, but when you come to me, I can see clearly. 
I can ask you, okay, tell me what is it that your tongue is supposed to do to say the word Edward? Do you know what your tongue is supposed to do? If you say, like most of people who start to say, letter E, letter D, you go like E, D, W, that's what you do. I said, nope, this is your point out of balance. Do you see what I mean? You got to know what exactly you need to balance. And when you know it, you just balance it. Easy, easy, very easy. Okay. Also, a little, another example just came in my head. Have you seen an NFL player, basketball player playing basketball? Have you seen how they do free throws? How they are standing in front of the basket and looking at the basket ready to throw the ball? Have you seen that? Have you noticed how they sometimes begin just dribbling the ball and then again standing like this and looking and looking? It looks like they are hypnotizing the basket. No, they're not. They're just getting back to their balance. They recall the balance. They want to do it in balance. They recall everything they've learned before. And only when they are ready, they go, shoo, they shoot the basket. And with the highly professional basketball players, of course, they make it. They make, they score because they act in balance. They, they have trained themselves from before. But sometimes they miss. They're out of balance. And what do they need to do to get back to balance? They need to do more training. <laughs> they need to do more throwing, throwing free throws again and again and again. Do you understand my points? So everything we do in life, it's all about balancing. All about balancing. Ah, okay. Okay, perfect. So Edward, thank you so much for your thank you. <laughs> I really enjoy when people don't just watch me, but give me feedback. Okay. Now, let me see. Edward wrote, please, can you tell us again all the parts of the balance beam of speaking? Of course. I can list it in a very simple way. I even, you know, I even wrote it here. Look, I wrote it on a piece of paper. Here, you can always come back and look. These are the balance points. Can you read my handwriting? It depends where your problems are. Can you see it? Balance points. Ear, ears, ear is, I mean, internal ear. Ear, eyes, tongue, lungs, memory, attention. This is not a secret. Okay, for me, I can share it freely. But it's not enough to understand what you are doing incorrectly, what you are out of balance in. You got to understand how to balance it correctly. Instead of touching your ear all the time, you need to understand how to prepare every single word before you can balance it with your tongue. You need to understand how to find this word, how to use your eyes, your everything you need to understand, to put everything in place, then this is why when I teach my students, it requires at least three days, three days. And this is why everyone is so happy because I guide my students to do everything correctly and they begin balancing their speaking. They begin balancing it in the correct way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We love you. You know what? Come to me. It's time you're going to begin loving yourself. Not Anadira, but yourself. Okay. So let me... Okay. Edward 
wrote, yes, thank you so much. We love you. Okay. I recommend you begin loving yourself, Edward. This is very important. And when do people begin loving themselves? When they are in harmony with themselves. When they have learned to harmonize, to balance. They are perfect, absolutely perfect. Body, mind, computer. What you have, I'm looking. I hope it's your picture with flowers. <laughs> you have a perfect body. You have a perfect, everything is perfect. All the ears, eyes, tongue, lungs, the brain that is a memory box, attention. You have everything perfect, but you still are out of balance. And whenever you're working in speech, you keep falling. You keep losing your balance. And when this happens, what do you do? You begin guessing. Oh, maybe I should do it this way. Maybe I should do it that way. Doesn't work this way. You got to know exactly what you need to do and do it everywhere, anytime. And I will tell you what does happen sometimes, unfortunately, even with my graduates, even after they graduate. Because what is my job? My job is to give you these points. My job is to make sure to walk you through the confusion in your mind and to make sure you have learned to balance your body-mind perfectly for your accurate <clears throat> and comfortable speech production. This is my job. I can give you the points. I can walk you through this process for three days. But understand that I am not the one who is keeping this balance, who is feeling your tongue, feeling, censoring your tongue, your ears, your eyes, your lungs, your this, your that. I am not the one. You are. And if you even after you have trained yourself how to do it, but after the class, you stop doing it. You will forget it. You will forget it. Because the older we become, the more time we need to repeat what we are learning. Repeat and repeat. It's called the process of neurogenesis neurogenesis when it's just a natural process when our brain develops the new connections in our brain new neurons we are creating these neuron connections when we begin to learn to do something new and the older we are the more difficult it is to make this learning because it requires more time of repetitions. And also, I want you to understand when you are learning something as a child, you are making this, your brain is making this new neuron connections deeper inside of your brain, the brain tissue. These neurons are kind of stay deeper in your brain as you are growing up. You're growing, your brain is growing, new connections are being created, and your neurons remain deep inside of your brain. Okay, just I always like to explain everything at the physical level. This is why people, older people who have learned to speak perfectly when they were young, they forget not as quickly as people who just learned. You just learned. You just got balanced. In the class, for three days, you worked hard. You have learned to balance your body-mind device for perfect production of any word. Of course, not any, just for the words we have trained the tongue during the three days. It's not all the words. It's... Good thing if we've done 
maybe 1,000 words, it's perfect. But in order to speak, you got to train, you got to balance your speech for what? 5,000 words, 10,000 words? It depends what kind of person you are, what kind of job you are doing, right? So, but if after the class you stop speaking, then you're going to forget. Your neurons are going to break again. This is why I always tell people, even when they join my class, they're ready to enroll in the class. You got to be ready to do the work because the only way we build the new neurons in our brain by doing our muscle work, muscle work, mm, muscle work. Eyes also have muscles. Okay. This is so important to understand. The moment you have trained yourself, you have balanced yourself, it means you have the balance beam. Now you do it a lot. And when you do it a lot, it becomes a habit. A habit. You no longer think about how to do it. Never, ever. You just do it because you are used to it. You got your body adopted to doing this with, again, accuracy, ease, comfort, and, of course, confidence. Just watch the way I speak. How many mistakes did I make? I could have made one or two because English is not my first language. Yep. I could have made grammatical errors because English is not my first language. But... I'm a balanced speaker, balanced. I know if I move a little bit to the right, to the left, I can always move, I mean, use my balance, balance beam. Okay, balance beam, that's how it's called. Okay, so Edward wrote, repetito est mater, what? I, I'm sorry, I don't read. I guess I can I don't know what you meant. You wrote it in Spanish. Can you translate it, Edward? I'm kind of suspecting that its repetition is the mother of learning. Stadiorum. Retention, probably. That's what you meant. Repetition is the mother of retention. Yep. You're absolutely right. And I see that you got to go. Of course, you can go. Sorry, man. I've got to. I've got to go. Thank you again and see you soon. Have an amazing day. Thank you very much. Of course I will. Okay. So Edward is gone. I don't see anyone is watching. I know a lot of people are going to watch me in recorded version. I'll do my best guys to come live again next Friday. The reason I switched from Friday to Thursday sometimes, because usually I have a student on Friday, but when I don't have students on Friday, it's much easier for me to do it on Fridays. So Friday, 11, about 10 a.m. Eastern time, I'll do my best to come live again next week. But hey, guys, bring your friends. You are on all kinds of forums for stutterers you go there so two recommendations i have i mean actually three recommendations i have for you today before i wrap it up recommendation number one download the device on your device god i'm looking for myself and i forgot that i am using instagram okay number one download live stutter free app on your device. It's one word, live starter free. Go download it and begin your education. Okay. You can do it even for free in the beginning. Number one, number recommendation. Number two, go to my website and register for live. Register for the webinar today. I got an information from someone that a person attempted to 
go to my webinar page and for some reason the message popped up that it's insecure internet connection that someone is stealing you know they do it they do it look at me you gotta see me to understand that the connection you are going to it's normal. Nobody will steal your information. Don't be scared. Just go ahead. I don't know why that person got this message. I'm not a technical person. Maybe there is a way. Maybe they use cookies. You know how they call it, cookies, schmookies. I don't know. But the bottom line, my recommendation, go and watch the webinar. Do it. And recommendation number three is schedule a free video call with me on Zoom. Zoom, Instagram, LinkedIn, anywhere. Anywhere you can do a video call with me, please do. But first, of course, I recommend you watch the webinar because the webinar will make a huge difference in you. I'm even thinking now about doing a new webinar about balancing, just the new concept of balancing included in the webinar. Okay, lots of love to you. I see that everyone dropped me and someone is calling me on Skype. I don't know why, how this could even be. Someone called me on Skype. Okay, lots of love to you all and... Uh, Lots of love to you all and see you hopefully next week, if not in my one-on-one -on -one Zoom class. Bye-bye.